Hi, you guys. It is another big four seasonal release. We've got Vogue Fall to look at now. Um, <laughs> I really don't know what happened with their summer schedule, but like all the summer patterns just came out like a few weeks ago, and now we're already talking about fall. So there's a lot of new patterns to take in, a lot of new patterns to build your stash. Um, if you're new here, welcome. I am Lindsay. I sew all my own clothes and my channel is really dedicated to all things sewing, fashion, and building your own handmade wardrobe. Introduce yourself in the comment section below so that I can get to know you. And other than that, let's jump right in. We're going to check out this new collection from Vogue. Now remember, and I always remind you guys of this before we get started, um, about the sort of like ideal customer of a Vogue pattern. Vogue's are our high end. They are our luxury brand. They are our, you know, runway type, high end, classy lady uh, um, type of patterns. So when you're looking at these, if you do not fall into that category, um, try to be a little bit <laughs> generous with your thoughts, um, and try and envision how you might be able to rework these to make them more your style. For Vogue, that usually means making them more casual, making them more ready to wear, um, making them more just accessible for everyday activities rather than something fancy, upscale, dressy. All right, so we've got our first pattern. It's a coat by Guy LaRoche. It is an advanced pattern, um, loose fitting, self lined. That's going to be a hefty coat, fully interfaced coat, another layer of fabric. This feels a little bit more like winter to me, maybe because <laughs> I live in the Southeast. So coats for us are really like, we only need them for a couple of weeks, but it's below mid knee has a bias collar. I love uh, bias collars. If you've never sewn a jacket or coat with a bias collar, the way that it like folds over itself and kind of like hugs your neck, you, it, there's nothing like it. Nothing like it. Bias collars are the best. Um, it has a hook and eye closure at the neckline, separating front zipper, three quarter sleeves, front waist darts, front waist darts are stitched on the outside. That's what's happening here. So like what normally would be on the inside of the coat is on the outside. Um, back neck darts, back shoulder pleat, skirt front and back has no side seam. So wrapping around your body here, there is not going to be a side seam. All right, let's take a look at some of these pictures. Obviously, this entire look with the gloves, with the tone on tone, this is kind of what I was talking about a second ago. This feels not necessarily matronly to me, but it definitely feels luxurious and high end. I wouldn't be surprised if this were some kind of like fancy wool that they used for this. Um, so think about envisioning this coat. When we talk, when we get to the line drawings, we'll be able to envision it a little bit better. But try and think about this coat with jeans um, in a different material altogether. Um, if you are someone that likes a lot of bling or um, maybe like a brocade would work for you. If you're like an edgy type person, think of it in like some kind of black metallic leather, something like that. But if you're more casual, think about it in like a denim or a corduroy or something like that. So uh, as I mentioned, there are the darts. Here are, this is the separating zipper that you can surprisingly see the closure for, but I guess that makes sense for a separating zipper. Maybe I'm surprised to see so much of the tape of it here on the left, but you've got a sort of like a, like a grown on shoulder that attaches to this sleeve piece here. So that's really interesting. Not a full on like raglan, um, not a so, uh, set in sleeve either. This here, I got to imagine is what makes it so advanced. This is probably pretty difficult. The rest of it seems pretty straightforward. There is a two piece sleeve, which I also love for fitting and just kind of how it allows, like when you wear it, it just feels different. There's a little bit of extra movement there. I don't even want to talk about this backdrop. I don't know what is going on. We're just going to try and ignore it. 
But here is what they were talking about. No side seams on the skirt portion. You do have one in the center back. And then you've got your quote unquote waist seam here, but this feels low. Um, in the front, yeah, it's definitely like a drop waist. This is gonna hit at your high hip. And then another piece that's really cool is this here. This sleeve just ends up coming together so cool. Um, there's the dart here, and then this is the back pleat that they're talking about. So lots of range of movement in this shoulder seam. It's going to be super comfortable to wear, very easy going, really cool design. Okay, so here is our line drawing. Okay, maybe it doesn't do that much to, <laughs> to help us, but you can imagine it, like I mentioned, in different fabrics. You can also shorten the separating zipper, lop off this skirt, and just have this top portion as a crop. Um, and that would be really cool. Because like I said, all of the design in this is really from the waist up. Um, all of these pleats, I mean, I'm sorry, the darts, all of this sleeve detail is really cool. And this amazing bias collar. Okay, so here's the back of the envelope. Um, they put the description on here. That feels new, right? I don't remember that from before. Um... Fabrics, midway crepe, gabardine, sateen. Okay, so the fabrics that they're suggesting are lighter weight, but remember, it's double, like the self fabric is used twice. I wish they would have shown the inside. Ugh. Um, and it also has full interfacing all the way throughout. So that's like three good layers of fabric and weight. So even though these are sort of like lighter weight fabrics tripled up, it's going to be a pretty hefty coat. Um, there's a lightweight fusible. Then it comes in alphanumeric sizing, extra small to medium and large to 2X. And then, yeah, five and a quarter yards of 60 inch wide fabric, which considering that the whole thing, maybe not the whole thing is lined then. Well, if it's all interfaced, it has to be fully lined. Hmm. Okay. Um, I was going to say, that doesn't sound like a ton of fabric. Um, so that's kind of good. And then only three yards of interfacing. So maybe, mm, yeah, I don't know. I have to look at the, um, the pattern instructions to make sure that these two statements are both true, fully self-lined and fully interfaced. All you need is a separating zipper and a hook and eye. And then here are finished garment measurements. So the bust, I mean, this is a really loose fitting coat, um, except for the hip, which I feel like is the most close fitting part. And they didn't include the finished garment measurements for that at all. I guess the width at the lower edge is pretty close. It's not too much of a dramatic A-line, so you could use this as your hip measurement. Yeah, you can see from the waistline to the lower edge, it's only a three-quarter inch difference. So, yeah, the hip is 44 to 62 and a quarter, roughly. And then it's is in French. Okay, all right, not bad for our first pattern. Very approachable, I feel like. Next up, we have this little dress. This is a in-house design. So Carlos at Vogue Patterns. Unlined dress is close fitting through the bust and has front opening with button and bias loop closure. Includes collar, front and back yoke with gathers, Wrap style skirt has waist tie, set in sleeves, have gathered shoulders and stitched hem, sleeve and length variations. Okay. So definitely kind of a nod to another decade. Wow, they use like fully rhinestone buttons here. So they're definitely going for something a little bit more elegant. But again, I think there's a second version of this in a more like casual fabric. So we'll see how they approach the buttons on that one. But try and think of this in different fabrics. A two-piece sleeve on a dress, which we don't see very often at all. This is the gathered sleeve, a front yoke with gathers. That's what creates the fullness for the bust. This interesting neck closure, an oversized kind of collar, wrap style skirt, meaning this part here is separate from the rest of the skirt. 
and then it's like a princess seamed skirt. This is pretty much midi length, maybe even maxi if you're not like a super tall model. So yeah, this is the more kind of casual look, but it's also a little more structured. And I think this might be some kind of satin, maybe satin, crate back satin or something like that. I don't know. It feels very structured to me. Then they just use these big bubble buttons and then they tied this one in the back. And it's also knee length and then a shorter sleeve as well. All adding to like more of a casual nature with it. It's really cute. It's really cute. And it fits this model very well. Um, here it is from the back. Again, you have a yoke. You have back gathers. This is the tie that goes to the front. And then a lovely like A-line skirt. Here's the back of hers where they tied it in the back rather than the front like the other model. No closures in the back at all. Yeah, it fits her like a glove. It fits the first model well too, but it looks exceptional on her. Yeah, I don't see any real fit issues with this one at all. Here are our line drawings. Yeah, I think we caught everything in terms of design detail. Here's the back of the envelope. Fabrics are crepe rayon twill. Yeah, they could have used a rayon twill for that pattern version for sure. Or a silk broadcloth. It had some kind of like sheen to it, but definitely was structured as well. Um, lots of fabric options other than these three. You can consider anything in the lightweight drapey section all the way up to like a mid-weight structured. Just know that the heavier weight, the more structured it is, the more that skirt is going to fall away from the body, the more those gathers are going to stand up and away um, and be a little just harsher and less soft. We've got all the sizes in one envelope. How cool is that? Small to 2XL, all in one envelope. We have some interfacing. And then the dress itself is three and a quarter yards to five and three eighths um, at most, depending on the length of the skirt. Eight shank buttons, a package of hem tape, and then our finished garment measurements. Really, the waist is what matters here. The bust a little bit, especially if you're fuller busted, but um, the waist is really what's so close fitting here. 28 and a half inches up to 44. All right, so next we have this number in a lovely brocade. It's a Badgley Mishka design. Very interesting, very unique. Okay, so lined dress has plunging neckline with tie, notch collar with collar stand, notched collar with collar stand, okay. Sleeves with turn back cuffs. Invisible back zipper, hook and eye closure, side seam pockets, and flared skirt cut on the bias with a narrow hem. This is going to be a fabric hog, I can tell you already. The reasoning why they cut this skirt on the cross grain, oh, cut on the cross grain, not the bias. Okay, that's, that's two very different things, my bad. Um, the skirt is very wide, which is why I imagine they cut it on the cross grain. All right, that makes more sense. So... I'm not seeing a collar stand. Um, maybe that's just me, but normally a collar stand would make all of this stand up from the body a little bit. Maybe I'm missing something. Grown on sleeve here with a turn back cuff, like they said. Then it's like this sash comes up through the middle and ties and then lays in the front, which is really unique and interesting. Side seam pockets, uh, I don't know about that. Um, unless they're anchored in somehow, I think I'm, I would mostly be annoyed with them. This one is a midi length. Here's the center back zipper. Waist placement seems okay. It could be a little higher on her. It looked okay in the front. Oh, 
because it it's empire in the front and then scoops down to the back. So that's why it just looks a little bit low on her in the back. All right, so yeah, just the one version. In the line drawing here, you can see how casual this could be. I mean, obviously this detail is going to elevate it no matter what, but you could definitely take this from like whatever kind of like tea party, wedding, day wedding, whatever she was going to and turn this into like a daytime brunch situation. Um, I mean, you could even wear this every day. Like my, my comparison for everyday wear is would I wear this to Target? I think in like a cool chambray or eyelet or something like that, I definitely would wear this around to run errands. Very, very casual. But this detail is going to stand out no matter what, no matter what kind of fabric it is. I wonder too if you could even do this in a contrasting fabric. That could make it really cool too. Especially if this is like a separate cuff that gets turned back and you could mimic those two things together. This I think is all in one. There's not a separate, oh this must be the little collar stand that they're talking about. So maybe it is separate. If so, you could do boom, boom, boom and have like, I'm thinking like black sateen with leather details. I'm thinking chambray, like dark denim and light denim. You could do some fun things like that. This is, I think, a knit dress. In-house design, easy rating, close-fitting pullover style knit column dress. Has asymmetric neckline with overlay, long sleeves, stitched hems, and length variations. Okay, so a fun take on the rib knit clothes fitting dress, right? It's the same rib knit dress that we know and love, but with this like shawl piece added on. Um, the asymmetrical one shoulder, kind of like a cutout situation, but not really. She's, I mean, elegant, right? <laughs> There's no two ways about it. Um, even in a more casual fabric like this one, which I feel like must just be like a jersey knit. Um, it still feels pretty fancy, but I don't know. It's still really cool, especially because the stripes are different from this part to this part. It definitely draws your eye up. It's going to be super slimming and look really great on every body type. I mean, I would wear that girls night out, date night. You know, it doesn't have to be Fifth Avenue fabulous. Yeah, it's cool. Very cool. Very edgy, right? Here's the line drawing. I mean, there's not much to it. Just a bunch of hemming, really. Here's the back. Um, Two-way stretch knits with 50% stretch along the cross grain only. So rayon spandex, I don't know, that feels a little lightweight to me. Cotton spandex. Hmm. I'm actually surprised to see so much stretch, but I guess, yeah, but they didn't include any cable knit. They didn't include rib knit. Um, I think you could definitely explore some other fabrics. Just triple check the stretch gauge you know, where you take the four inch thing and then you have to move it to at least six inches for this pattern. Two sizes, eight to 16 and then 18 to 26. So two and a half yards roughly. And then finished bust goes up to 47 and a half. Hip goes up to 52. So that's decent <laughs> decent for Vogue I feel like if you were to get a fabric that's a little bit stretchier you might be able to eke out another inch or two this way all right 
Next, we have, oh Lord, okay. In-house design, average rating, lined dress, close fitting, has raised waistline, bust and waist darts, contrast collar with pre-gathered lace trim. I think that's what's throwing me off here. Above elbow length, gathered puff sleeves with sleeve head. So that is a substantial sleeve happening there. Button front bodice, invisible back zipper, hook and eye closure at back of collar, regular hem and length variation, separate pattern pieces for your cup sizes. I think that the fabric here, the fabrication is what is going wrong with this. These, this fabric and this application are two people going to two separate places. Um, maybe if this were in more of like a beige color or even black, I don't know why they chose white. Like, I don't not like this fabric. I, I like this fabric quite a lot. I just feel like it doesn't go with this like at all, like at all. But nonetheless, you do have this, you know, oversized, exaggerated Peter Pan collar. Great for pear shapes or anyone that wants to draw the eye up. Maybe not so great for those of you that are fuller busted. And then you have this amazing sleeve. It drapes down over this cuff, which is interesting. You've got this ribbon bow, plus this is a button and this is a button. So you've got those two buttons, which I assume are functioning, but why? I'm not sure. Then this is the raised waist. So not fully an empire waist, but definitely not at the natural waistline either. Kind of somewhere in between. And then for her, they've got the knee length. Definitely like a slim fitting skirt here. Here is another version, a little bit better, okay? I do like the plaid with this. I feel like plaid and this kind of prairie type collar, they're going to a similar party. Maybe it's the lace trim? I don't know. Like, would that be better if it were like an eyelet trim or something? Or even self fabric? would be better with like a little ruffle. I don't know. You'd have to play around with that a little bit, but you can see the details of the bodice a lot better. This one is very big on her through the waist, um, but fits pretty decent through the hip. And then this is a midi length. I don't know. The more I'm looking at it, the more I'm like, you know, if I, if I were like walking down the street and I saw this girl walking to me in this whole outfit styled the way she has it, what would I think? I think she probably got it at Goodwill. <laughs> this has a huge like uh, kick pleat in the back. And then also here you can see what's supposed to be an invisible zipper, but not quite. However, I will commend them on attempting to get these lined up. You can see the darts really well on this um, plaid version as well. And you can also see the big buttons on the sleeve cuff. Okay, yeah, interesting. You know, another thing that kind of strikes me about this is they chose to make this one their custom fit ABCD cup sizes, but I wouldn't recommend this for someone with D cups. I feel like that unless you're trying to accentuate the fullness of your bust, which is definitely a possibility, I feel like it would just make you look top heavy. Here are the line drawings. They are definitely, hmm. I, sometimes the line drawings will help me visualize what it would be like in a solid fabric and that kind of helps sometimes this one I just don't know I don't know about this one I feel like it could grow on me or it could be very forgettable one of the two but interestingly enough they are recommending this for a upside down an inverted triangle 
where your shoulders are wider than your hips. I don't know that I would, even an hourglass. I'm not sure for an hourglass. I would think definitely for a regular triangle, absolutely for like a rectangle shape. But I don't know about drawing all that more attention up to the bust line if you're full or busted. Okay, fabrics, wool suiting, crepe, linen blends, really anything that's mid-weight, um, structured, anything in that cotton blend category, any of that stuff. Also for contrast, so this would be the collar, velvet or satin. Now velvet could be kind of cool. You know, if it were like a tone on tone with different um, uh, textures, that could be really cool. Lined, because the whole dress is lined. Fusible interfacing, and then 8 to 16 and 18 to 26 on the size range here. We have about half a yard for the collar piece, almost two yards for interfacing. Dress is roughly two and a half yards up to three yards, two and a half, three yards, and then a whole bunch of interfacing as well. An invisible zipper, four buttons, two in the front, two on the sleeves, two hook and eyes for the back collar. Gosh, it's taken a lot to get into this thing. A small snap somewhere, <laughs> um, pre-gathered lace and ribbon. Wow. Okay. So our bust is fitted. Um, it's 50 and a half. Well, the smallest is 34, which is interesting because the other patterns that didn't have cup sizes went down to a 31. So all the petite girlies really aren't getting much to help them. And then the waist only goes up to 43 and a half and the hip 53 and a half. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about the sizing. I don't know about the cup sizes for this pattern. Like of all the ones to choose cup sizes for, it's this one. I don't know. And then like, yeah, I'm not feeling super confident in this one simply based on some of those recommendations that they're making. Here's one. Very easy, fit and flare dress with cowl neckline, set in sleeve with gathers, bust darts, empire waist seam, bias cut lower front and back, stitched hems and length variations. Like this one would have been a perfect candidate for different bust cup sizes, especially because of the empire waist. Like if you have a fuller bust, this needs to sit below your breast tissue, which means you need a fuller cup if you have a fuller bust. Huh, okay. I'm gonna try not to harp on that too much as we continue, but you guys get the point. They also burned the fabric a little bit, it looks like. <laughs> what is happening? Okay, so I don't know how I feel about this structured cowl. You could obviously leave it off, but, and then they're coming, in still this is like the third or fourth pattern we've seen with these um gathered sleeve caps another two-piece sleeve love the idea of a bias skirt um especially one that is so close fitting through the waist and then flares out this is just going to look stunning in so many different fabrics the bias cut is going to cause the hem to be beautiful and full and robust and really make a statement while also hugging your curves in the most flattering way. There's a lot of good happening here for sure. Here's one in a little lighter weight fabric. I would like, again, this seam to be a little bit lower on her. You can even see where her bra is. That's where that seam should be. The stripe is cool, definitely lighter weight through here. Yeah, just some length issues with this or fullness issues, hard to tell. 
here's the back. Okay, definitely some issues with the back in terms of fitting. We've got definitely some wrinkling happening here. It looked fine in the front though, but usually the wrinkles point to the issue. And for me, this is pointing to the bust again. This is pointing all up to the bust, meaning there's not enough here in this seam to accommodate what's happening below it. Um, which makes me think that the bust, even if you were like the, the smallest bust of all the busts, you'd probably still have some fitting issues. But I think if you were to lengthen this, get the cup size right, this would disappear. It does also feel a little snug around here, right? And then this is also really interesting. It's happening over here too. Where it's almost like there's just... Maybe it just needs to be full. Hmm, I don't know. Again, a lot's pointing to the underarm, which could be a result of the bust again. It's hard to say if all of this is coming from the bust, but it absolutely could. It absolutely could all be coming from there. This one, I feel like that just looks like a giant pucker and not so much of a gather. But this is pretty. Yeah, how does hers fit? Similar but better. So maybe... Yeah, and she also doesn't have those wrinkles. So, yes, I'm thinking definitely a bust issue. I'm also thinking definitely the lighter weight fabric could be playing a role. Also, is this a knit? Because if that's the case, that could definitely be playing a role in why it's fitting a little bit better. Like, this is Ponty and this is Jersey, maybe? I don't remember it saying it was knit, but it could be. But then again, these bust darts make me think that it's not. Yeah, just, I mean, checking a few things. You should be checking these things anyways. It is a knit dress. Okay, 50% cross grain stretch. I'm not convinced that red dress was 50% stretch. At best, it was a mid-weight ponty knit or even a lightweight ponty knit and those don't have a ton of stretch at all see ponty knit here I don't know that ponties have 50% stretch cotton spandex nylon spandex yeah cotton jerseys hmm yeah but I would be for sure making up a little mock-up of this bust area it's not that much fabric um, and making sure that it hits underneath your breast tissue, the bar darts are in the right place, it's not pulling anywhere. I would triple check that before I add on anything else. It has lots of potential though. I don't want to, I don't, I know sometimes I go on and on and on about the negatives of a pattern. And in other patterns, I don't go on and on about it, but that doesn't mean that the ones that I go on and on about, I don't like, <laughs> if that makes sense. It's just easy to pull out the issues and address how you would fix them. Whereas with the last pattern, I don't really know how you'd fix that one. You know what I mean? Like there weren't very many fitting issues, but the design seemed off. This one, the design seems cool. Very ready to wear, very easy to wear, very like, you know, approachable, but just a few fitting issues. Okay, same size as the last one, roughly three to four and a half yards, depending on the length of the skirt. Remember, it's a bias cut skirt, so it's going to take up a lot of fabric. Um, the hip is negligible. The waist is probably, see how this one, even without the bust cups, goes, oh, finished garment because it's a knit, so obviously it's going to be, but that's like a big difference. I don't know. Anyways, this one's 28 and a half up to 45. Um, they're also saying the bust and the waist are the same. I don't know if I believe that either. I mean, you can definitely, whoa, you can definitely see how it's going in here. So that's interesting. All right.
I mean, the Ponte does make a great sleeve and a great skirt, but she kind of looks like she can't move, right? She kind of looks like, oh, I'm a sausage stuffed in this casing. And then the neckline makes it really weird also. All right, here's a vintage one. Now, I, I don't give myself enough credit, I guess, and never really know what to say about the vintage ones, but <laughs> I will do my best. This is a coat from, it doesn't say when, maybe here. 1945 full-length coat, ha coat has tight belt drawn through casing at back that is pulled through side front seams to regulate fullness love that built up neckline is dart fitted at front I think it's the terminology like when did we get away from using terms like this does this mean grown on built up hmm Standing band collar across back neck, okay? Long sleeves are set into deep armholes, okay? The rest of it I understand. Here's our girl. She looks so cool. Two-piece sleeve, like they were saying, very long sleeve opening, very wide. There's also definitely a shoulder pad in here. This is the grown-on collar they're talking about, some buttons here. Then you have this seaming, and there's a casing on the inside of the back. And then the drawstrings, quote-unquote, go through that casing in the back and then are exposed to the front, and that's how you nip and tuck and make it tighter. That's a really cool concept. Oh, maybe in the back you can see the casing too, but along the sides, it's on the inside. Right? Super cool. I can also see this as a shirt dress for sure. So maybe instead of coating, you use some kind of fashion fabric instead. Especially if it were like for the holidays and you were doing like a brocade situation, that could be super stunning. Here is the back. Medium weight wool, wool blends, gabardine. It is lined fully. Um, and then there's also interlining, which is also, I think they got these mixed up. I think the 54 inch is supposed to be one and a half and the 45 inch is supposed to be the three and one eighths. So only portions of this are interlined. I don't know which portions. And then there's also inter, oh, interlining, interfacing. I can't read my bad. So that it's fully interlined. Fully lined, plus a medium weight wool and or wool blend. That's a lot happening. And then interfacing is only one and a half. That's a lot. Okay. So finished garment measurements, 8 to 16 and then 18 to 26 are, is the sizing. 37 and a half, so very loose fitting bodice. The waist, you kind of nip and tuck yourself. And then the hip is also very loose. So yeah, really, really great for a lots of different body types. I wish they could help us learn how to make these fabulous matching hats. Oh, okay. So this, oh, what is happening? Okay, we might have to do it this way. Let me try again to make sure it wasn't just a fluke. It was a fluke. Okay. Just spazzed out for a second. It's fine. Okay, so we've got top, shorts, and pants. In-house design, average rating, tops, close fitting through bust, are lined to edge. Does that mean to him? And have off-the-shoulder sweetheart necklines. Stunning, by the way. Top features empire waist seaming, front button closure with bias loops, open front, and length and sleeve variations. Shorts and tapered pants fitted through hips have side button waistband, slanted pockets, and side zipper. Okay, so this is obviously a look. Wait till you see the shorts version. 
I don't know that you could, this, this is going to be one of those that's like either set for, made for someone who just loves to be a little bit extra with their everyday outfits, loves like showing up and being the moment, right? It is not for the person who likes to be a little bit like blend in. It's not for the person who wants to blend in. I think that this would look stunning, amazing, 10 out of 10 on everybody who makes it to wear to like a special event, an award show, a holiday party, uh, anything like that. I feel like this is a showstopper. Um, no two ways about it. Whether you wear it during the day just really depends on your personal style. But this here, I mean... I mean, just gorgeous. Fits her absolutely beautifully. And she's a fit model, so this wasn't made for her with her measurements. So if it fits her this well, you got to imagine how well it's going to fit just about anybody else. Beautiful shaping through here. Princess seams through here. Now, lined to edge, maybe they mean this edge here. Maybe only the cups are lined because through here it looks like a hem. And then a very close fitting sleeve cap. You can see they even had a few issues with some puckering here. But two piece sleeve again. These are your three buttons with the loop closures. And then your pants, which have the little ironed on, iron pleat, iron crease, and then ankle length. Now here's another option, which tell me you couldn't show up to some kind of pool party. Now, I'm not talking about the pool party where, like, all the kids are swimming around. I'm talking about the pool party where nobody gets in the pool. And there's, like, past hors d'oeuvres and, like, cocktails. Like, things that happen in L.A. or New York on a rooftop. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I, I can't imagine wearing this to Target. But she looks incredible. So, again, absolutely stunning neckline. It is pulling away here, but because she's got her arm raised, um, obviously she's holding this back with her hand as well. And if she were to let it go, like not a lot of your skin in your midriff would show, but I mean, shorts with like a long jacket, that's a vibe. That is a vibe, like no two ways about it. Um, you can see how it's lined here. Really beautiful. Both of these women have pretty straight figures, like a, like a rectangle ruler shapes. So these little hot shorts look great on both of them. Those of us that have a little bit more curve to our bodies, you know, it would take a little bit more to get it fitted. All right, so for as great as the front look, the back is a little sloppy. I mean, there's this, which just feels... I don't know why it's bunching like that. It's got to be the arm side, right? Like something happening with the arm side. Also, all of this feels really big and loose. Um, this feels okay. There's rogue string there. And then in the crotch, there's a lot of extra fabric too. Yeah, I'm just close fitting pants through and through. They're not going to show us the back of the... Whoa! the back of the short, but why is that happening? But this feels better. There's still that same issue here. It's not as pronounced on her. I would just double check the back width and then also the arm's eye height. Yes, okay. Yep, there they are. Okay, so here's more on the pants and shorts. You do have a curved waistband with, uh, what are they called? Belt loops. In the front, you have four pleats. In the back, you also have four. Um, those of us that are pear-shaped could probably stand to add another one, but that's not hard to do. And then you can see how there's a side zipper and then like a belt, um, not a belt, what's it called? A, a tab like a tab with a button to close. 
slant pockets, which look pretty good on curvy shapes as well as straight shapes. Fabrication, they're recommending Poplin, which I think was the black and white version. Mikado was, I think, the yellow version. And then Ankara fabric, oh, that would be so cool. Sateen, also cool. Yeah, they're really recommending something with a little bit of structure to it. Um, mid to, yeah, mid, maybe lighter side of heavyweight, but midweight for sure. Lining fabric, fusel interfacing. And then here are your fabric requirements. The shorter little jacket is only one and a half yards about at most. Now the longer one is almost six. And then the shorts are one and a half and the pants are two. Three buttons, one zipper, another button. Please refer to the English guide for finished garment measurements. Womp womp. It's definitely giving, I mean, this is what I think people look for from Vogue. Like you're not supposed to be able to wear it everywhere. <laughs> and that's just the way it is. Okay, now we have, okay, okay, I'm getting this, a blazer and a jumpsuit. Please tell me those are stirrups. Please, 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 please. I want these to be stirrups so bad. Line blazer, semi-fitted, has shoulder pads, side panels, welt pockets, and two-piece sleeves. Okay, great. Pretty standard on the blazer front. Close-fitting knit jumpsuit. Has princess seams, shoulder straps, neckline finish with elastic. Great detail. Invisible back zipper and stirrups with elastic under the feet. I cannot believe First of all, I can't believe stirrup pants ever went away. That was just such a practical thing, especially when you're trying to get it into boots, trying to create a long leg line. Like, why did that ever leave? So the fact that they're coming back, that makes me so happy. Okay, let's get into this a little bit more. Like I said, the blazer, geez, the blazer is a little bit kind of standard. It is very simple. I think this might be a welt pocket, as is this. No closures, simple, simple. They're really trying to create that hourglass shape illusion with this kind of opening of the jacket. Great pattern matching through here. It looks, I mean, very well made. They did an exceptional job making this. The jumpsuit underneath, I think, is probably going to be knit. It's in black. It's really hard to see the details in these photos. I feel like she's feeling it. I feel like they could have literally, like, taken this picture in 1982 and put it on this website in 2022 and it would be all the same. Um, her thick eyebrows, the heavy makeup, like all of it is giving 80s. All right, so here is the jumpsuit. Now I can't say for sure that I would wear this by itself, but you don't have to only wear it with the blazer, okay? Think about chunky sweaters. Think about like chambray button-up tops or white crisp button-up tops, cropped cardigans, all of those kinds of things you could wear with it as well. We do have a lot of seaming here. I'm going to look at it closer in the line drawings. But the fact that this is finished with elastic is what is giving that such a close fit through here. And it feels like it's holding her in. Um, so it's going to feel comfortable. Oh, super chic with the jacket just kind of thrown over the shoulders. Here's the back. Kind of dips down a little bit. Lots of photos on this one. Thank you very much. Okay, so it's, gosh, pretty simple. It's just princess seamed and then center front and center back seams. Now, if I'm being totally honest, I'm not a fan of center front seams on close fitting jumpsuits simply because it causes, I don't know what how else to say it other than camel toe, right? Um, if there's a gusset in here, 
maybe that would help, but then that would also definitely take it to more of an athletic look, which they were probably trying to avoid. So I don't know. Fit through this area length mostly is going to be imperative because you've got this pulling, like you can't fudge the length here. The straps are the way the straps are and the stirrups are holding it to the bottom of your feet. So the length is the length. Know what I'm saying? Beautiful seaming on that jacket. If you don't have like a good standard blazer, this one would be really great. Okay, so for the jacket, suiting, gabardine, tweed, crepe, linen, and then for the bodysuit, they're calling it a jumpsuit, but it's really a bodysuit. Four way stretch knits with 75% stretch. So that would be the rayon spandex. That would be the cotton spandex. Um, if you wanted to make it out of something a little less stretchy, you'd probably just go up a size. Um, a has lightweight fusible interfacing and also lined. Nothing of the sort for the bodysuit. 8 to 16, 18 to 26 on the size range. Um, the blazer is two and a half yards. The jumpsuit is roughly two yards, two and a quarter. Shoulder pads for the jacket. The jumpsuit surprisingly has an invisible zipper up the center back. But if it's 75% stretch, do you really need that? I don't know. And then quarter inch elastic for the upper edge, three eighths inch elastic for the straps, and then one inch elastic for the stirrups. All right, so, <laughs> oh, in the most predictable of situations, they've given us the finished garment measurements for the jacket, but not for the bodysuit, which the bodysuit is really kind of what matters because that's the most fitted thing, but whatever. All right, cool, fun, very on trend. You are going to be seeing people, if you haven't already, in these full-length bodysuits a lot. A lot, a lot. Um, I have one that I bought that is short, and I wear it all the time. It's so comfortable. All right, now we've got this. Oh, this fun little number. Cardigan, tunic, and pants. Easy rating. Slim fit v-neck cardigan has button front and neckline facings. Loose fitting asymmetric tunic has long sleeves, uneven hemline, and stitched hems. Wide leg pull on pants have elastic waist with drawstring, self tie, and stitched hems. I think this is a knit, another knit set. Totally here for the sets. This one's really cool. They use like a ribbed sweater knit. It definitely has a bit of a drop shoulder with your sleeve, and then all of this fun seaming. I love this neckline detail. Um, and then how this kind of curves to the front and then your little asymmetric situation. And then these pull on pants, you could make like one for every day of the week and be super cute and comfortable. Here is the cropped cardigan version. I mean, I would wear this all the time in the house, out of the house, everywhere. This pulling down though, not so sure about that. Um, but it's really cool. Very on trend again, especially this marled like sweater knit. Perfection. Here's the back of that other one. I kind of love how it's like pulling against itself. You know what I mean? The crotch seam looks really good on there too. Yeah, maybe a little bit of a wedgie happening, but looks great otherwise. Yeah, I see this one doing really well for them. Three little, I think there's elastic, a drawstring, and then elastic. So that's going to stay up nice and comfortable. And this top, although they paired it with this 
you know, as a matching set, this would look equally as cool with, you know, trousers, jeans, wear it over that jumpsuit that we just looked at. Even this over the jumpsuit would be cool. Okay. Um, moderate stretch knits, so 35% cross grain, stretch rib, sweater knits, and jersey. Yep. Look up skims, really. That's whatever fabric they're using would be great for any of this. Two sizes on this, which is a little bit disappointing, but extra small to medium and then large to 2XL. One and a half yards for the cardigan, two for the tunic, and like two and a half for the pants. Not bad. Three buttons for the cardigan, and then three eighths inch elastic for the pant. But you need two and a half yards of it, which again makes me think that they're doing two sets of elastic casing. And then finished garment measurements for the A for the cardigan, which is close fitting, goes up to 47 and a half inches. Um, it is a little bit, even though it's a knit, still very loose fitting, which is not very, but still not super tight, um, which is why you're able to get away with 35% cross grain stretch. The hip is 34 to 51 and a half. Yep. All right, now this little look, Rachel Comey, love her, top and shorts. This is very Rachel Comey. Okay, they're calling this advanced, very loose fitting, pullover top, has dropped shoulders, funnel neckline, long sleeves, pleated into cuffs, pleated into cuffs, back zipper, shaped hemline, shorts, semi-fitted through hip, have front patch pockets, side back pockets, exposed side zipper closure with button, and buttonhole at waistband. They made this out of some kind of denim, I think. You, Rachel Comey's for sure, you can always find this as it was made for retail. So you can see all kinds of different fabrics that she used for it. But yeah, you've got all the top stitching. It feels like denim, right? It's supposed to be boxy, oversized top with pretty relaxed shorts too. But I mean, you could definitely make this out of like sweatshirting and things that maybe don't have a ton of stretch to them but are still soft and comfortable if the denim feels like it would be too much for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for a picture of these freaking shorts without the top on. Like, if you're selling me a top and shorts, but all your photos have the top covering up the details of the shorts, how the heck am I supposed to know what to do? Am I going to like the shorts? Am I not? I don't know. But these shorts are actually really, really cute. Um, they sit like maybe an inch below the waist. This is the side zipper and button closure. Big patch pockets with slant openings at the front. I mean, I love it with the matching like loafer super cool oh get a hold of these back pockets so fun so curved back pockets there is one singular dart yeah these shorts are super cool and then here's the top it has oops it has some kind of oh lord going rogue here some kind of shoulder detail then they use a metal zipper because the denim is so heavy weight. Drop shoulder, curved seam. Yeah, that's just a cool look. Yeah, very cool look. All right. So, medium weight cotton twill, which is also denim, uh, chambray, lightweight denim, um, B's waistband has a lining as well as those pockets, I think. Oh, no, they're patch pockets, so maybe not, but broadcloth for that. And then both top and shorts have some fusible interfacing in them. Um, 
8 to 16, then 18 to 26. Pretty across the board using a similar size combo for all the patterns this season, so that's good. The top is roughly two and a half yards, a little bit of interfacing, which I think is for the cuffs and maybe something in here. And then the shorts have one and five eighths, so one and a half inches. Interfacing is one and a half inches also. And then the lining is half a yard for the waistband. I don't know why you need so much interfacing. Maybe the pockets are interfaced. One nine inch zipper for the top and a seven inch zipper and a button for the shorts. The top, pretty much negligible in terms of finished garment measurements, but the hip on the shorts is 38 and a half up to 55. So pretty roomy short there. It's meant to be like a little bit boxy, but fully fit at the hip, I mean at the waist. So what I like to do is make the waistband first, like make the waistband my waist size, make the hip, the everything else my hip size, and then if I have to add in more darts front to back, I can do that to get the bottoms to match into the waistband because I'm so, so much of a pair. But yeah, she's a cool girl for sure. All right, now we have this fun little, like I'm getting um, Fleetwood Mac, like 70s rocker vibe. Sandra Pizzina, average rating, dress and tunic, have set in sleeves, front dart, contrast yoke, and sleeve rustle, ruffle. View A has one patch pocket. View A and B have neck bands, front placket with snaps or optional buttons, stitch hems, and optional ribbon trim. Okay, Barry Sandra, right? She loves an asymmetrical thing. She loves mixing prints, um, which is what we've got going on here. So we've got a collar. We've got a button band. We've got the yoke with this ribbon trim that's also kind of like rickrack. And then the one pocket. Then the sleeve comes in multiple parts. It's also got some like tucks in the sleeve. There's just a lot happening. Okay, here's a bit of a simpler version where you've only got two fabrics and one trim. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's like a little pleated velvet ribbon. Big wide bell sleeve. Here's the back. Yep, pretty standard. The back of the dress. Yeah, this is what I wanted to see. All right. Okay, not as bad as it seemed. I think that that first fabric is like a patchy fabric print. So it looked like there was a lot more going on. But really, both versions only have one contrast fabric and then the trim. So that helps. I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. Like, I'm not much of a tunic girl, but I mean... Maybe if you made it into a top. This just feels like a really cool, like, I would think I would leave it unbuttoned maybe, or at least only buttoned to here. I don't know. It's kind of fun. Here's the envelope back. Double border prints for dress A. So that's how they were able to get all that going on. B, drapey rayons. Contrast A is a sheer mesh. Oh, A, A and B are sheer mesh. And then Notions, two and a quarter yards of one to one and a half inch wide pleated trim. 14 snaps or buttons. Ribbon and then more snaps. She has her own sizing situation happening. All of them are always in one. Um, so up to three and three quarter yards for the dress and two yards for the tunic plus your contrast fabric. So pushing four or five yards. Finished measurements. Yeah, pretty loose fitting everywhere. 
and then they didn't even give the hip measurement because it's so wide. Yeah, this is just like a really funky border print and made it look like it was more pieces than it actually is. Okay, now we have, okay, um, in-house design, average rating, pullover, semi-fitted through bust, has box pleated front and back with pleat underlays, bias stand collar, closes and back with buttons and bias loops above back slit opening, can be sleeveless or long sleeves. Okay, I think the issue here with this one is that they made like a set with a pencil skirt, which I don't know. Maybe the full length will be a little bit better, but you've got your pleats that open up and make this very full hem. I'd like to see this extended to a dress. I think that could be really cool. And you have a stand collar. That's the sleeveless version, obviously. That collar looks incredible on her. Um, I don't know about the shiny satin. Um, fit seems to be okay. With her, they put her in a pencil pant. That feels a little bit more appropriate proportion-wise. But... I don't know, the top feels a little long on her. Maybe that's it. Maybe the fullness of the top plus the length is just too much. Like it needs to be a few inches shorter or longer. One of the two. That's not to say though, if I saw that girl at a restaurant somewhere, I wouldn't be like, wow, what a cool outfit. <laughs> um... Same with this one, maybe just a little bit shorter, and I think that it would feel better on the eye. Here's the back, very similar to the front, just a keyhole opening. This one they used a few like sparkly buttons. I'd love to see it in a less structured fabric too. I think that could also be really cool if it fell a little bit closer to the body. All right, so they're recommending medium weight wool crepe. It's just, a, that's a lot. Mikado, which I think is what the pink fabric was. Linen blends, lightweight denim. I'd like to see it even in just like a cotton poplin. Lining fabric, is it fully lined? No, partially lined. I think the collar is, I don't know what else, but one and a half yards almost. Top A is two and a quarter yards, and then top B with the long sleeve is two and five eighths. So not that much difference between the two of them, and you only need three buttons. The bust measurements, the bust did feel a little close fitting, 38 to 53 and a half finished garment measurements there. Yeah. Okay. I get it. I get it. I think the styling is what is off here. I think if we had put this in a McCall's collection in a, maybe a print or maybe some kind of like border eyelid or something, I don't know. I feel like it could be more, I don't know. I don't not like it. <laughs> Such a vote of confidence. All right, now we've got a button-up top by Marcy Tilton. So Marcy's usually known for, I mean, I guess it's a little bit wild, but definitely not as wild as she can be. Average rating, loose-fitting button front shirts have below elbow length sleeves with underarm gusset. That's cool. Um, turn back cuffs with button and bias loop. Shaped collar with button detail shaped high-low hem, stitched hems, and length variations. I like the shape of this a lot. For like a button-up top, the shape is really cool. This gusset, you can see that even they had issues sewing it, so I can't imagine what it would be like for the rest of us, but turn back cuffs, but really it's just, a, you just see the raw hem. So you would see the wrong side of the fabric, 
important to note. Um, and then there's a, a, a seam on the top of your arm, which can provide some shaping. And then shaping through the hemline. Here's another version. I'd hope to see a better detail of the underarm gusset, but alas, I don't. You can see the wrong side of the fabric here. It's just a little bit lighter. This fabric is not cute. But yeah, with a legging, with a, like a ponty pant, I love it. Yeah, there's even a little pucker in the collar. Maybe they just didn't have like their best girl on it or person. There is a little vent here, which is cute. And you can't see the gusset any better there or there. I do like it though, I really do. Ah, okay, thank you. Now you can see how this gusset works. Are these, everything else is the same other than the length? Okay. Yeah, and I mean, I might leave off like the button detail on the collar or swap this collar out for a more traditional collar. I don't know, but I do like the shape of it. And I think these are really cool and provide like some, I don't know if it's shaping necessarily, but definitely doing something to make this not feel so overwhelming on her petite frame. Fabrication is linen, cotton, seersucker, quilting cottons, lawn, cotton flannel, taffeta, and gauze. Yeah, your lightweight or shirting weight wovens with a little bit of structure, extra small to medium, large to 2X, a little bit of interfacing for the collar and maybe for the cuffs too, uh, roughly two yards for either version, 11 buttons, and then very loose fitting. Okay, now we have this girly from maybe the 80s, let's see, 1980s design, is that what that says? Yeah, 1980s design, all right, let's go back to the main page, um, in-house vintage design, easy rating, very loose fitting, pullover blouse, has bias draped front, Drop shoulders, back neckline slit with buttons and loops, longer short sleeves with buttoned pleat at lower edge. Push up, maybe that like this girl in blue, you can push them up and narrow him. All right, so here's our first one. Yeah, very 80s. All of this is on the bias. So all of these like drapes are gonna be really beautiful not feel bulky at all and then this is the button cuff they're talking about drop shoulder there's a very 2022 version with no without a sleeve attached very modern and then this one they slouched up a little bit there's the three girls the two versions remember the blue version just has the sleeves pushed up Then crepe de chine, silk charmeuse, tissue fail, fall, chalet, lightweight crepe, handkerchief linen, lightweight knits. Yeah, so they're going for like lightweight with a little bit of structure in the fabric. Six to 14 and then 16 to 24, roughly two yards, some buttons. And then the bust is 36 to 51 and a half, pretty loose fitting. And the waist is 36 and a half to 52. Yeah, pretty roomy little blouse. But I think it's really cool. I love this A version. Like I would buy that in the store, I think. And you can't really go wrong with fit on this one either, which is also really appealing. I'd like to know how long it is, but other than that, I think that well, and they didn't really, the illustrated versions are always harder to assess, but okay. We've got some pants going on here and these are pants. Wow. Okay. 
Okay. Um, In-house design, average rating, pleated wide leg pants, very loose fitting through the legs, sit below natural waist. Pants have layered front pleats. Zip, uh, fl zip, fly zipper front, hook and bar closure, side seam pockets, back welt pocket with flap, belt loops, stitch him, and length variation. Yeah, I think I thought we were kind of over this. Like, I've done these uh, maybe like 10 years ago. But I guess this little overlap pleat thing, that is pretty cool. Maybe not with this fabric. I don't know. It feels feels sloppy but the crotch looks pretty good okay here it is in a more like stable fabric I guess you can kind of press it down a little bit more and it does what you tell it to do this also feels like they have this sitting at her waist which proportionate feels better like the wide hem almost has to have a high waist to balance those two things out so maybe on the other girl the fact that it was so low on her waist was also making it not feel right the back looks really good and the crotch curve looks great Yeah, also, you can tell these are higher rides on her because of where the pocket is sitting. Like, this is on, like, the top of her bum, whereas for her, this is almost the fullest part of her bum. Yeah, even the line drawing looks kind of sloppy. And I'd probably leave off the patch pocket in the back. The welts are a lot of trouble, so if they don't look impeccable, I'm not going to bother. Cashmere blends, excuse me, cotton twill, which I think is the pink version, and then linen blends. Yeah, I can see it being in something a little bit, just a little bit drapier. The, co the cotton twill was okay. Um, lining fabric, lightweight fusible, same size combination as the others, a little bit of lining for the pockets, interfacing, just a tad, two and an eight to three yards, depending on your version, zipper, hook and bar. And then the finished garment measurements. Yeah, very loose fitting in the hip. Why don't we get a waist measurement? Come on. <sighs> okay. And then we've got shorts and pants. Um, In-house design, easy rating. Mm -hmm. High-waisted shorts and pants, semi-fitted through hip have waist facings, front pleats, fly zipper. I don't know when a fly zipper became easy, but okay. Side front pockets, back waist darts, belt loops, stitch hems, and top stitching. So high waisted. It's not supposed to be paper bag waist, but they used such big belt loops. Like, why are they so long? The waist stops, the waistband stops right here, which would have been more appropriate. I don't know. You either need a very wide belt for this or like shorten these belt loops. That feels obnoxious. Um, but you do have a pleat extending here. Fly front, they said, slash pockets. I like this like wide top stitching detail. Oh, it's kind of like stitched down, like a patch pocket would be. The short is super cute, although for her, too close fitting. That's why these are, see how on hers, they just kind of pull apart, even with her hand in her pocket, but it's still roomy, right? This one, she doesn't even have her hand in the pocket, and it's already like pulled tight. This isn't laying flat, and there's also like a wrinkle here. But the concept is really cute, and I like that bracelet and her nail color. 
I don't know, this belt, maybe because it's just bigger, but the belt loops are still so far, so low. I don't get that. Back looks decent. Too tight on her. Like, way, way, way too tight on her. This is, like, two sizes too small. Like, the pulling through here, the, all of this pulling, yeah, just way, way, way too small. Your girl's got curves, and the shorts do not. All right, there's the line drawings. They definitely, like, taper down. You could easily redraw that to be straight leg or even, like, a flare A-line. But nonetheless, of course, check the hip circumference. I do like the really long darts. All right, so sateen, linen blends, twill broadcloth. Yeah, any of your bottom weight fabrics. A little bit of interfacing, one and three eighths to two and three eighths, depending on the length. And then you just need one little zipper. And then the waist on this one, 26 and a half up to 43 inches. So that's going to be like the smallest part of you. And then the hip is only, what is that? Eight and a half inches wider than the waist. So if you know you're a pear shape like me, mine is much different than that. Um, but that can help you sort of figure how close fitting the waist, I mean, sorry, the hips would be on you. All right. And then finally, we have some men's jeans. Again, I'm not great at assessing fit on a guy, but close fitting tapered leg jeans have fly zipper closing waistband with belt carriers, back yoke, back patch pockets, front pockets, coin pocket, edge stitching and top stitching, front and back seaming for a perfect fit. Front and back seaming for a perfect fit? I don't know how that makes sense. Narrow hems and ankle vents. Ankle vents? Wait, is there not a in the in seam? This is like toward the front. Why aren't we doing that on girls' pants? And then with the these are cool for girls. What the heck? Yeah, it's like a crotch gusset. I don't know. That's kind of cool for anybody. Imagine like a ponty pant like this. Hmm. I mean, the sizing might be a little funky. Finish garment measurements. The width of each leg. That's helpful. Yeah, I don't know what this 34 to 46 really means. I think I'd have to, like, really figure out the finished garment measurements. At least of the waistband. Because they're pretty straight. You see how there's not a lot of curve to them? So I'd probably have to add some, like, I don't know if it would be darts up here or, like, if I can fudge it into this yoke or get out of this little seam here. I don't know. But that I for girls and guys all right all right but that is vogue fall 2022 what did we think we're gonna look at the lookbook here while we kind of wrap up um i think it feels really good to be looking at fall <laughs> patterns um summer's fun and all but i don't know I'm ready for it to be not hot anymore and be able to wear like a variety of clothes. I feel like in the summer, all I wear are shorts and, you know, biker shorts and rompers and that's really it. So I'm excited to have some variety here. Um, some really interesting looks for sure. Definitely hit the nose for Vogue, but also a little bit wider appeal in some of these other ones as well. So I'm interested to see what you guys think. Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. 
Um, otherwise, I'll just keep rocking and rolling with these as they keep rolling them out. But that's going to do it for me today, y'all. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon. Bye!